Hello and welcome to our 12th edition of Table Talk. I can't believe we're at 12. Uh, so yeah, really excited to welcome you to this last Table Talk of the year where we're gonna do a year in review. So for folks who are new to Table Talk, Table Talk is Airtable's weekly show where we answer your questions about Airtable. And I'm your host, Aaron Kornblatt, and I'm gonna be going through all of the questions you have about what we launched this year. But more excitingly, I am excited today to have uh, Andrew Ofstad, co-founder of Airtable, gonna be joining us in a minute to kind of answer your questions about what we launched, how it fits into the roadmap, and really having an opportunity to speak to one of Airtable's co-founders. But before we get into it, I wanna acknowledge some folks in the chat. We have some, uh, some long time uh, 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 attendees, if you will. So OP, welcome. Stephanie, Coolbone, Jan, Chris, haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back. Michael, uh, Penny as well. So if you're new here, make sure to drop a hello in the chat for I get a chance to know you and for other Airtable creators to know you as well. So a few things you need to know before we jump in. We have a lot of questions for Andrew. You can submit your questions as well. As well. So go ahead, there's a link in the chat where you can submit your questions either to Andrew or to the different things that we launched this year, which I'll be doing a recap of in the second part of the show. And more excitingly, maybe to some of you anyway, is you could have also have the chance to win Airtable swag, which I'll draw at the end of this show. So go ahead and submit your name and email to that form to have the opportunity to win some Airtable swag. Uh, and for folks who have already won, let everyone know uh, 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 how, uh, you know, where, what you, what you got, show it off in the chat. But with that, those are the things you need to know for a table talk. Without further ado, I'm really excited to welcome Andrew Ofstad, co-founder of Airtable, onto Table Talk to answer your questions. Welcome, Andrew, to Table Talk. Hey Aaron, thank, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, super excited to be on the show. Long, long time watcher, uh, first first time guest. So yeah, uh, happy happy to chat. Yeah, we got a ton of questions for you. So uh, I hope you're ready because folks had questions. They're interested in what we launch, what we're gonna launch. So I am so excited and I can't thank you enough for joining us on Table Talk. So again, if folks have questions, go ahead and drop them. We do have some that we're gonna prioritize throughout. Uh, and yeah, just in the chat, give give Andrew you know a good Table Talk welcome, drop some waves in the chat, make sure that he feels welcome. And I'm gonna jump to the first question that we have. Let me go ahead and see, we have a little agenda here. So the first question we have from you, Andrew, which is from me, I decided to prioritize one of my questions for once. Wanted to know, uh, you co-founder of Airtable almost 10 years since the founding of Airtable. And I was curious, what was the first time you saw uh, uh, Airtable being used in the wild, right? So uh, you were dreaming of it. When did you first see someone using Airtable? Yeah, it's a good question. There's kind of a few different things that come to mind. And one was maybe not exactly in the wild because when we first started, we we built the product initially just a prototype that didn't fully work. It you know it looked good, but it didn't didn't kind of persist the day and everything else. And we showed it to a friend who happened to be a filmmaker. And he, um, at the time, was shooting films and used this old like, iPhone app called Shotlister, which was basically how do you keep track of your cast and crew and production on the set on mobile. And um, you know, he, he basically saw our product and was like, oh, it looks kind of cool. And then the next day, he came back and he basically re rebuilt Shotlister in Airtable and just like had the, you know, the cast table, the crew had them all linked together. So it's kind of fun seeing him. Uh, seeing, seeing those wheels turning. So that was kind of the first moment I remembered uh, or kind of saw somebody else who actually built an Airtable. I think the other time that comes to mind, and, and these are sort of, for me, kind of, you know, milestones in, in the company and seeing how people um, actually use the product. But, uh, you know, we, we did a trip to New York to talk to some early customers and we visited, uh, we worked their corporate office. And I remember kind of walking around, having only seen Airtable on my own kind of developer uh, machine before. And like walking around and seeing it open on a lot of people's screens and just kind of blew my mind. And I'm like, wow, we, we can't mess this up. People are like actually using this thing and uh, depending on it. And, and so that was, that was pretty, uh, pretty fun. And then there are like other moments where I saw it more truly in the wild where kind of, I, you know, I see a, something on Twitter for 
maybe in like 2017, the kind of uh, fires and wildfires in California and somebody put up a forum for Airtable mm -hmm. to, to help find volunteers to respond to that. So that, that was very uh, kind of heartwarming to see that with, with Airtable, they're able to really quickly kind of spin up these response efforts. So those were all sort of memorable points in time for me when I kind of saw the product in the wild that uh, kind of, you know, validated what we were building and, and made it, uh, you know, just really exciting to see the people getting value out of it. Yeah, that must be so exciting. I mean, even today, I'm sure folks in the chat have some examples. So mutual aid, Chris, that's a great example of, you know, uh, truly implementations of Airtable making a difference. And it's, you know, personally, it's super fun to walk around and be like, hey, I think that was organized in Airtable. Right, you know, uh, or hey, I think I think the people behind this use Airtable, or even as mutual aid is an example where Airtable is front and center as a form. Uh, so that is, I'm sure, as the years go by, you get more and more exciting of different use cases, even more exciting stuff being built on Airtable. So as a question to the audience, I'd love to know: Have you seen Airtable in the wild? Or when was the first time? you encountered Airtable, let us know in the chat. I'm super curious of how everyone first got to know Airtable. Cool, we got a lot of questions. So I'm gonna to try to speed through these, Andrew. All right, but most important part, we can't forget, we've got our confetti. Nice, yeah, that's, uh, that's a great app. I always forget about that one. <laughs> the Chime, the Chime app. Chime, yeah, it's a Doesn't classic. get enough, doesn't get enough love, that's for sure. Um, okay, next question. We got a question from Kevin asking, when you look back at what we launched in 2021, what was the headline of the year? Was there a theme or focus in 2021 that we kind of achieved? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I apologize if, if this isn't quite a headline, but I'll, I'll try to kind of sum it up um, as concisely as I can. But I think for us, we, we think about Airtable as, you know, like a, a application platform for people to build on in a very easy way. And so uh, really customers are empowered when not only they can build something on Airtable, build an application that's useful, but also uh, have an impact with that, which usually means get people in their organization or, you know, their uh, volunteer efforts like we're talking about, whatever it is, to, to use Airtable as well and to, to really kind of, um, you know, drive a process or make an impact with the product. And I think that's very similar to our own journey as software creators building Airtable, where you know we're not successful if we build something in a vacuum and nobody uses it. But like we we're talking about before, it's cool to see that uh, the thing you built, other people are using it for this and that. Um, so a lot of what we built in the past year is taking the kind of you know Airtable um, uh, Lego kit and helping creators kind of scale it up and and helping them uh, build applications that can scale to hundreds or thousands of collaborators. And so, you know, things on that front are um, obviously things like the, the view, a lot of things we did around view management, uh, you know, having the, the sections and, and so on and so forth. Uh, even things like just managing more complexity. So on the automation side, uh, just kind of redesigning that whole service area to make it easier to build more complex automations that have several different actions or, you know, conditional logic. And so really kind of rethinking how we, we build automations for scale while still keeping it super easy. And last but not least, I think, you know, a big challenge for our customers is they've built this amazing base in Airtable and, and uh, you know, they keep adding collaborators to it and it, it's super useful, but as it gets bigger and bigger, it's harder and harder for collaborators to know what to do in the base and to understand it and to, uh, you know, it just gets more and more complex. So that's a big part of interface designers. How do we actually make it way easier for creators to kind of design a custom interface uh, for, for their collaborators to make those collaborators like their job a lot easier. So all they have to do is go into the interface and they'll know what they need to see and what they have to do. And it can really be bespoke to that part of the workflow they're working on. So uh, that, that's really been um, you know, a, a big part of that theme as well. So you know, really all these things kind of uh, help help creators build applications that are more impactful and, and larger scale and uh, you know, work with more and more people within a team or a department in their companies. And you know, the other thing we're always pushing on is, is just kind of making the product simpler and making mm -hmm. it easier for new creators to, to be able to build as well. So we're, we're always kind of pushing on you know, what we call like the high ceiling. So how, how much can you scale up your work in Airtable and the low floor, which is like how easy is it to get in the, you know, the no-code house and the house of Airtable? How, how much can we you know, simplify building on the product. And those are the, the two things we're constantly pushing out on as a, a product and, and a broader org. 
Yeah. So I think, I, I actually think you are speaking to the right audience. I'm sure folks here started off very small and then their bases became crucial to their business, got a lot of collaborators and became you know, almost uh, uh, an organ of their business. And then what you're saying is that this focus this year is how do we enable that type of large collaboration, crucial elaboration, increase the ceiling while also making it approachable and easy to use as a new user. So things like multi-source sync, for instance, view configurations, all that fits into one of those two and always pushing the product to more complex use cases, but also keeping it usable for everyone. Uh, so I'm sure everyone feels that. I don't know. I personally feel that as both someone who teaches people Airtable and also uses Airtable on a daily basis with hundreds of people. Uh, so I think uh, I'm excited to show folks a little later what those are, but I think that was a great summary of everything we've done this year. So let's go into everyone's boom. All right. Okay. I think this question comes from Jan. Uh, Jan, Jan, I know you're here. Let me know if I'm saying that right. Uh, great question, uh, which I slightly rewarded, Jan. Appreciate it. Um, so, Andrew, as someone who's been at Airtable since day one, not only been here, but you know, dreamed up the whole thing, how do these new features play into Airtable's vision? Would you say 2021 is a departure? or a continuation of Airtable's vision since day one? Yeah, I think it's it's very much been a continuation, I would say. And I think it's something I don't reflect on too often, but uh, you know, Howie and I started working on the product back in 2012. And so we're really coming up on 10 years of uh, kind of building Airtable. And I think looking back, we've always had the same or star, which is, you know, democratizing software creation and uh, really kind of giving access to, uh, you know, a much broader audience, uh, give, giving them the, the kind of tools to build, build software. And it's funny, actually, a couple of years ago, when we were kind of eight years into this endeavor, we looked back at our original kind of vision deck for, for Airtable. And we were pretty blown away because like the things we said we we're going to build in that deck were pretty similar to the things we've, we've launched in the past, you know, uh, three or four years. And I think looking back, uh, you know, we're, we're like, yeah, I think at the time we probably thought it would take us a couple years to build that, uh, but it, you know, it took us like eight or so years. I think it's always harder than it seems. Um, but you know, I think a lot of it is we were inspired by you know how software was built and how you know frameworks out there like the MVC framework and just kind of seeing that over and over again, you have like this model layer and then you have uh, you know kind of a logic, you know, business logic a controller like an MVC stack. A layer, which for us is, you know, automations are, are kind of a powerful way to, to build the business logic or kind of, you know, automate things within your workflow. Uh, and then obviously the view part, which, you, you know, we obviously have views, having different kind of lenses on the same set of data, but then interfaces were a huge, I think, step on, on completing that stack as well. And not just, uh, you know, get really giving creators the ability to kind of build their own bespoke interfaces and views on top of that stack. And I, I think, uh, you know, looking back to our early pitch deck, we had, uh, you know, some note of like, yeah, we want people to build their own interfaces. We want them to build, uh, you know, logic and automations. You know, we didn't actually call it automations back then, but sort of like that controller layer uh, and things like even like sync, which we, you know, we've kind of made a lot of progress on the past year. Mm -hmm. So uh, the components were all there, but, but the devil's always in the details of how do you make those things, like we we're talking about before, easy, and how do you round out the corners and how do you make it accessible to the much broader audience? So I think we've always had an idea of what we had to build, but the hard part is figuring out how to build it in a, a way that's easy to use and that is as simple as possible, uh, and that you know really is a good product that that um, kind of you know is is, is uh, fun to use and, and empowers people. Yeah, and I, and I think as a non-developer personally, uh, you know what you have enabled me and I'm sure a lot of folks in the chat is to build apps or software that we never thought we would, and I think. What I'm hearing from you is what we did last year speaks to those building blocks, right? So making the data, data layer, the Airtable bases more convenient, more usable, adding on top of automations, allowing people to use logic. Oh, I forgot to move to the chat. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. We'll just, that's post. We'll fix that in post. Uh, uh, now I see <laughs> you properly. There we go. So uh, oh, great. allowing people to have the data, adding logic on top to create automations and now allowing that interface layer, right? So folks don't even necessarily need to access that underlying data has always been in your mind, the kind of vision of Airtable. How do we 
democratize all of those and truly allow people to build, uh, um, you know, software. So uh, what I'm hearing from you, if I'm wrong, is, is a continuation and a doubling down of that vision from 10 years ago. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think we always knew we wanted to build a software stack, um, but, you know, it's, and we had the broad strokes, but it's, it's taken us a long time to get all the details. And that's where the hard work is, really making it easy. Uh, the technical foundations to make it all real time, just everything kind of works seamlessly. Mm -hmm. That's been like the, the big effort. And then, and obviously, you know, there's tons of other stuff that goes into it, but the, I think the vision and the foundation has, has been there. And we've been, um, you know, I think surprisingly, uh, have had the, the same kind of North star for, for all these years, which is, um, which is really great. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's good to have like a, a long-term vision that, that can take you a long ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So we are going to, uh, plow through this. We've got four more questions. And again, so I saw in the chat, a question about where can I get the link? Uh, so in the chat at the top, there should be a link for the swag form. Uh, if not, if someone from Airtable can drop that at the bottom of the chat as well, so folks know where to go to ask questions and to uh, submit their name to get swag. All right. Boom. All right. Cool, cool, cool. We have a few more, few more confettis to go through here and some great questions. So this one comes from Chris. Uh, thinking about overall, kind of zooming out of Airtable, thinking about overall technology trends, how has 2021 informed your view on the future of no-code in the workplace? Will we see a similar pace going forward, uh, or are we going to revert back maybe to a slower uh, integration or usage of no-code in uh, large organizations? Yeah, it's a great question, and I think... Um... You know, I think obviously the big thing is the pandemic and people moving to remote work. And there's kind of, there, I think that there's sort of like this initial wave of, you know, when everybody was suddenly working from home, there's kind of the obvious stuff, the communication tools, the Zoom, the Slack, and definitely like an acceleration of companies just kind of moving to those basic cloud collaboration tools. So that's definitely, you know, kind of uh, been, been one accelerant. But I think like there's a, a bigger shift that's, that's happening as well which is that uh, the world has changed so quickly that, you know, I think businesses, the way they've had to operate has changed quickly as well. And so many companies have gone, uh, you, you know, kind of like from more, you know, maybe like one example is if you're like a fashion retailer, you might have more of like a uh, brick and mortar operation or kind of work within your region. And suddenly, you know, you're sort of uh, in this world where you can easily kind of build on top of things like Shopify, you can have an e-commerce operation, you have much broader reach with, with uh, you know, social media. So companies can sort of pivot into digital first companies, which uh, is great. It expands their audience, but it also makes it a much more competitive playing field and they have to uh, innovate in the processes and kind of really scale things up. You know, maybe another example is like a fitness chain, right? Like you used to have uh, everybody goes into their their local uh, whatever 24 hour fitness, but with the pandemic, like you know, everybody's kind of working out from home. So how do how do we pivot these businesses towards uh, streaming operations where they have you know kind of fitness fitness classes online, so on and so forth. So I think there's there's really been a need for companies to innovate more and more in the past couple of years because the world has changed so quickly and the way that people consume content, consume um, you know products and services is happening more and more online. And with that comes like a global audience and uh, the sort of uh, necessity for much more innovation to differentiate your, yourself. Uh, so, so the good news is like no, no code tools are a great way for uh, companies to do this in a very, you know, uh, scaled way. So you don't have to hire a development team. You don't have to like use the same software as everybody else, which by different definition isn't differentiated. But instead, if you have a good systems thinker or somebody that can uh, assemble the pieces of these tools, uh, you really can sort of innovate and and really change those those processes really rapidly to adapt to the times and adapt the way you have to change your business. So really, I, I think like the the um, you know these these things have been happening for a while, but it's really been an accelerant the past couple of years. Um, not just the digital transformation, but also the mandate for companies to innovate and to to um, really have like more of an entrepreneurial spirit, which I think no code tools give, um, give all these amazing creators within these companies the power to do. Yeah, so for folks watching, uh, kind of uh, uh, wanna positioning no code tools, you can take that last two minutes of Andrew and talk about the value that, you know, no code tools broadly bring to your organization. And I think that speaks to, you know, the years that we had two years ago and the, where we are now, where everything's had to change, right? How do you do that quickly? 
And uh, I don't think you or I can imagine going back to the way things were, if you will. I think everything is getting more and more digital. You can now power a one person stream uh, remotely, have someone come on, have people watch. I think we're all used to this. So what I'm hearing from you is it's not, we're not going back and it's only gonna accelerate going forward. Yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, it's just the beginning too. Like, I think there's still so much room. Like, if you think about all the knowledge verticals that we're in the world and and the opportunity for you know a much broader audience to build applications and deliver value with that, I think it's you know there's still uh, we're still just at the beginning. So I think it's exciting times ahead, but things certainly have changed a lot in the past couple of years. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, all right. Got a few more questions, folks submitting. Not never too late. Get that pie chart filled up. <laughs> okay. All right. This is uh, a question uh, from Laura, and we got a lot of this. So this is a question, I think, broadly from the community, uh, which asks, how does Airtable approach maintenance, so small tweaks, changes, versus big features like interface designer or sync? How do we balance that on our roadmap? Yeah, it's been a topic of internal conversation. I think, you know, when there's a few things that, that we, we think about. One is just the culture of the team and the culture of the product. And I think a care for quality and, and building things that just work and really simplicity is, is kind of like the core of the company. How do we make things that are complex much simpler and easy to use so, um, you know, we can sort of widen the, the world of software creators. So I think that will always be a part of our culture and something we think about when we're hiring and uh, just a big part of how we build that I think, well, is not, you know, it's not going to go away. So that applies to both the sort of new big features we're building as well as uh, just improving the quality of existing things. But I think it's, you know, really a kind of a portfolio balance where obviously we want to keep pushing forward. And like I said, kind of do the things that lower the floor and kind of raise that ceiling, let people build more and more uh, powerful deployments of Airtable. Uh, but you know, the, the sort of quality and just sort of the, um, rounding out the rough edges and kind of making existing features better and better is super important as well. So we want to invest, um, you know, kind of dedicated teams towards that and, and kind of have more of a portfolio where we have like the teams working on the big new things, but we're also making sure we're following through with the stuff we've launched and, uh, adding, adding to those and, and, you know, kind of thinking about the stuff that maybe has been neglected for a while. Um, so, so we really want to invest in both of those. And I think the good news is we've grown the team a lot in the past couple of years and we can do more of both with sort of like the, the kind of, um, you know, uh, product team we've built. So super excited to make progress in both of those things, but there's no, uh, you know, super scientific answer. It's just kind of like portfolio of, of investment on both of those things and just a culture of trying to build for quality and making sure we're, uh, you know, that's, that's continually part of our DNA. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that ethos on simplicity is, I think, one of the things that make Airtable so, such a pleasure to use, right? And, uh, you know, I'm excited to, to continue that. And what I'm hearing from you, and I'm sure that the community is going to be excited about this as well, is that, you know, we're gearing up efforts to work across both, right? So small tweaks make things more usable, more simple, but also continue on those big platform pieces that, you know, enable so much value on top of Airtable. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's a lot of stuff that is not super visible, like performance and, um, you know, kind of scale and that type of thing that you don't get a lot of visible credit for, but we still, you know, are planning on investing a lot in. So I think, um, I think those are important as well. Yeah. You're definitely going to get credit from this crowd. That's for sure. They love that they're basically awesome. quickly, yeah. <laughs> that they're up. Uh, and that's key to everyone watching here as well. So definitely let's give some uh, some applause in the chat for all the work that's gone uh, over the last year, even though it doesn't necessarily show up in the Airtable base you out. And shout out to the whole team if they're watching for all the amazing work. I've definitely noticed the bases to go faster, especially in complex cases and really truly phenomenal work. So uh, hats off to them if they are watching uh, and uh, really appreciate all the help. Cool, okay. Next question here. But before we get to it, boom. All right. Uh, yeah, so lot, lots of love in the chat around, uh, uh, you know, all the performance. Appreciate, we appreciate that, Jack, Colleen, Jan, Chris. Uh, I'm going to make sure to, to, to let the team know that they're seen for sure. 
Okay. So this That'll is pass another... that on the next slide. <laughs> yeah, you're a better person. You like that as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, this is another question from Ellie, uh, from the community, which is, what do you think, Andrew, is the most underappreciated, underloved, or underused part of Airtable that you love? Uh, so, uh, this is a tough, tough question. It's kind of like ask, asking you, uh, which, is, which is your favorite child type of thing. Uh, not that I have children, but I'm, I imagine it's kind of a similar, similar question. But uh, I guess, you know, maybe I've always been a big fan of group grid view. I think it's just such a powerful thing. I don't think it's underrated. I think people, a lot of people use it. It's um, just the way you can sort of have multiple layers of grouping, move things around, almost like a Kanban board. It's just a really powerful view. Uh, maybe this is more of a recency bias thing, but I think during the holiday season, I'm kind of, you know, doing uh, holiday shopping. I make I make use of Web Clipper a lot, which I think a lot of people don't know about, but just really easily being able to, you know, snapshot a bunch of information from a page and create a record. Really great for research. Um, I use it for recruiting as well. So, you know, look at a bunch of LinkedIn profiles and kind of clipping stuff into a base. And then you can build so much cool stuff on top of it once you have that in Airtable. Like, I think that's really cool stuff, you know, with uh, maybe like sync as well, getting off on a bit, a bit of a tangent, but sync, you get a bunch of cool uh, records, like all your uh, whatever employees or kind of, you know, Salesforce companies. And then you can add all the the views and the, the apps and the interfaces on top of it. So I think once you have data in Airtable, like there's so much cool stuff you can do on top of it. And Web Clipper is a really good way to get things off the web into Airtable. Um, admittedly, like it can be a bit easier to set up, but I think, uh, once you get it going, it's, it's super useful. Yeah. I think, uh, let, let us know in the chat what people feel is the most underloved. I think you've nailed web clipper on the like utility value graph versus usage is definitely not as used that as how valuable, uh, uh, it is. Uh, and Andrew, we know that you love all features of Airtable equally, and you love all teams that build those features equally. So I want to make sure that that's clear as well to the team. One, uh, one question for you, Aaron. What's your favorite? I know you've been a huge fan of the button field, but I wasn't sure if you, know, if you change month to month or where you, where you are right now. You know, I would say button and webhooks on the underrated, super valuable. That is, that is, my, that is my quadrant of love, if you will. If I can teach people about button, and incoming webhooks or sending scripting as well in there, I would say uh, uh, button, webhooks, and scripting are my three kind of areas I think I wish I could teach everyone about Airtable for sure. And this is why my whole plan about being on YouTube is for people to let me decide what we're going to teach and then secretly just teach scripting uh, <laughs> buttons and webhooks. Yeah, it's a powerful combination. That's a good point. I think, uh, you know, rating the combos is an interesting exercise. <laughs> We're going to get into combinatorial, combinatorial challenges there, but there's some love in the chat. So uh, the person behind the Airtable, who was unnamed, but I know who it is, big fan of Matrix app, obviously, the two-dimensional Kanban view, which we don't often talk about, uh, uh, pivot table app as well, very strong one. Uh, documentation, which I imagine is a mix of base description or the description app, dedupe app. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of we need to we need to show off more more of those little gems. <laughs> cool. Okay, we got we got a few more questions. Not too late. Please continue uh, dropping some questions. And Andrew, really appreciate the time here. We're going a little over, but I do think folks are appreciating you answering all the questions. So. Little confetti here. There we go. Okay, this is a question from Coolvone, who is our number one question asker in terms of uh, uh, quantity, and we always love getting Coolvone's questions. I'm going to summarize this by saying, you know, we learn a lot about uh, you know Excel or programming basics uh, in school. We really learn about databases. So when do you think folks should start kind of learning about databases? Should we not teach spreadsheets? And you know, what is your approach to teaching folks about databases? Oh, that's an awesome question. Uh, I think that, I mean, I guess I'm a bit biased, but I, I would say 
you know, the earlier the better. Um, I, I do think like spreadsheets are useful for in uh, for, for a lot of things, right? Like just like basic modeling, kind of running some numbers, just understanding that that kind of uh, model is, is super important. But I do think it should be something that lives right alongside learning word processing and, uh, you know, spreadsheets and simple things like email. It's just basic computer literacy. Mm. And so I think there's so much that, um, you know, students could, could build with it. And, and just a lot of the stuff you're probably doing with computers, just organizing the efforts of many, whether it's like uh, whatever, um, you know, I'm trying to go back to my high school days, but, uh, you know, or even earlier, but just, just organizing like a, a track meet or kind of like, a, you know, like a, whatever bake off, or I forgot what they're called, but where you like all bake cookies and sell them, you know, it's just a bunch of stuff where it's just like a list of things and just structured data and maybe some relational tables. And I think uh, a lot of things are on mobile and the go now. And I think that um, a database is a much better format for that. So I think the types of things that people do uh, early on are, are sort of like, especially as you kind of get into high school, is like a lot of organizing things and, and kind of getting the efforts of many to move in the same direction and the database and, and sort of like that single source of truth is a, a powerful uh, force multiplier for all those things. So, uh, you know, obviously um, I'm biased, but I think, I, you know, let's get them started early. Yeah, never too early. I think that's a takeaway. Just teach everyone databases and the world will be a better place. Uh, or a more organized place, I should say, and a more uh, uh, well-oiled workflow type place. All right. Absolutely. So uh, Chris mentioned, is there time for submitted questions? Go ahead. Uh, if we can prioritize, Andrew, if you have a couple minutes at the end for a quick fire, we're going to get into the last two questions we had. Uh, the last question here, but you know, if you have a couple minutes, if folks have questions, I'm happy to do a quick speed round if we have that time. But with that said, while we're organizing that, let's get to the last uh, first, important, let's not forget, confetti. There we go. Okie dokes. All right. So uh, last question here of, uh, and before we get into like a quick round, if we have time, um, from Eliza, but truly from the, the community, can you give us any insights into the roadmap on in 2022? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, like, like we were talking about before, definitely a continuation. I wouldn't, you know, anticipate any major pivots in what we're building. Um, and I think some of the themes we touched on, just like the, the quality and simplicity will be super important. How do we make the product easier to adopt? Uh, as well as kind of, you know, pushing, pushing the ceiling. So how do we uh, continue to, to improve things like interfaces and, um, you know, scale bases and performance, so on and so forth. Uh, so I won't go into more detail beyond that. I, you know, I think um, in a future show, there, there, there uh, should be some more depth in the roadmap. But really, uh, I would say more of the same and hopefully, you know, kind of accelerating uh, progress in all those and, and really excited, um, you know, for, for the year ahead. So, Andrew, you said something there that I do want to kind of uh, uh, make sure to mention. Uh, I know folks in the, the, the community have specific questions around the roadmap. When will X happen? So what I'm hearing from you is that there's going to be a focus on continuing to rise the ceiling, make more complex workflows, uh, be able to be run on Airtable, but also keep making it accessible to folks who are new to Airtable. Now, for folks who have those questions around, you know, when is X going to launch? In January, probably late January, uh, we will have a session where we're going to deep deeper into the roadmap and answer some of those specifics with a guest on Table Talk. So I can't say more than that. Do you want to make sure to keep the suspense going? Uh, but we are going to kind of address a lot of those questions. We've gotten a lot of them. We have them in the bank and really appreciate folks asking. And I'm excited to share that in January. We do have some plans there. Um, great. So do we have... Boom. Okay. Well, that was our last question. Andrew, I'm going to do a quick confetti here, and then we're going to... You know, to give you thanks, say thanks for joining us. So, folks, let Andrew know how much you appreciate him joining on here. And I'm going to go boom. All right. Well, Andrew, it was a huge pleasure. Thank you so, so much. I hope that wasn't too painful. We had a blast with you on Table Talk. 
Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome being on the the show. Uh, happy to come back anytime. Yeah, it was um, you know really really great um, great experience. So yeah, awesome. Thanks a lot, and thanks for, for the community. Like you've uh, you're you're a huge part of what Airtable is. So really appreciate all your support. And um, yeah, hope to be back soon. All right. Well, you've got thanks from Jan, Chris, Stephanie, Coolvone, Bunny, Chris. Uh, so folks, definitely appreciate you coming on. I hope you'll come on again. Really appreciate it. And then we're going to jump into our year in review. So see you, Andrew, and I'll talk to you soon. Yep, see ya. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Jack. Okay. We still have time. We're going to go. We have more things for you. I have more things I want to talk about today. So huge thanks for to Andrew for joining us. Thank you all for listening to that uh, talk with Andrew. And as I said, we're going to have more in January 22. Uh, but we got questions that I do want to talk about where folks asked us, well, what is everything you launched this year? So we got questions of like, hey, it's been a long year. You've done a lot. And Table Talk only started in January. Can we get a summary of everything you launched? And as you know, your uh, questions are my promise. Your There's an expression there that I'm missing. Uh, your wishes are my command. Is that it? I'm not sure. So let me know in the chat what the right expression is there. But I did want to quickly go over everything we launched and make sure we end the year with some uh, confetti and making sure that we feel excited going into 2022. So these are all questions for me, right? So first question is, what view types did we launch in 2022? So uh, as Andrew said, base management and making sure that data is clear and you can scale Airtable bases to as many people as possible uh, to enable complex workflow was a huge focus in 2021. And one way that that manifested itself is by two new view types. So we're going to go into our campaigns base that if you're new, familiar with Table Talk, you've seen before. But essentially, we organize campaigns and all of the content that relates to those campaigns. So let's jump into the two new view types. So the first one that we launched earlier in the year is a Gantt. So Gantt view lets you see your records on a timeline, but also see dependencies and identify what is the quickest path to get your project or whatever workflow you're managing to completion. So let's look at a Kanban here. So here we have a campaign with a uh, a look at everything. Let me see if I have a different of them. There we go. Seems like we have an issue with the link record, but that's okay. Let's look at a year. And I could see that clearly we've we've flipped, but I won't fix that right away. So we have our Gantt view, which lets you see dependencies between records and lets you see information on a timeline. And we got feedback that folks wanted a view where they can create swim lanes. So keep that way of looking at your information but not necessarily see those dependencies. Maybe you want to see that uh, uh, swim lanes across teams, across function, across departments. And in June or July or in September, I'm not sure of the exact date. Let me know in the chat if everyone remembers that exactly. Uh, 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 we launched Timeline View. So that was the second um, new view that we launched this year. And this has that ability to create swim lanes and see all of the things you're working on across a timeline. Additions, you could customize the labels vertically. You could do a lot. We did have uh, uh, Taylor from the Timeline View team come talk to us on Table Talk. So if you're curious about how exactly it works, what was the thinking behind launching Timeline View, do check out that Table Talk. I think it was number four called Views. Uh, so do check that out where we talked about Timeline View and Gantt as well. Okay, so that was our first launch. Two new view types this year. That was our first big bucket that I want to talk to you about for our year in review. So let's make sure we have some love for Gantt and Timeline View in the chat. Yeah, okay, great. Um, and folks, if you have questions, I'm seeing some questions in the chat. Uh, feel free to drop them into the form. And if we have some time at the end, I'm happy to do a bonus kind of speed round of answering all of your questions before I send you off for uh, the new year. OK, great. Our next big, so you heard Andrew talk about how do we scale 
Airtable to thousands of collaborators? How do you enable a complex workflow? And what we heard from the community and our users is that view management can become difficult when you have hundreds of people working in a base. How do you make sure that everybody knows the information that they need to access? How do we make sure that the view creation uh, is simple, but also organized at all times. So let me talk a little bit about the different updates we did to view configurations and the view sidebar to enable really complex and large workflows to run on Airtable. So here on the left, the first thing I wanna bring your attention to, and this, we got a lot of feedback. We moved the sidebar to the left last year, and here we created a collapsible create a view, not section, but part of the view bar, which if you're not creating a view, you can collapse down. And that allows you to have that visibility into all the different views. Second update, small but important, those really quality of life updates was view sections. So you can now group your, section, your views into sections, maybe for the relevant team, maybe to attract attention and say, these are the views that you can update information in, and these are the locked views that you just get information out of. So really working to make this view sidebar organized and understandable for uh, you know, either complex use cases, but really making sure that everyone is able to work seamlessly in any Airtable base. Then next thing I wanna bring your attention to is that we've moved how you create views and make it easier for folks to create personal views. So if I create a grid view, now by default, it can be collaborative, but if you have a base with many views, it's gonna go ahead and default to personal. That way folks, when they're building their views, they understand the consequence or what kind of view they're creating. And this makes the possibility of adding a bunch of views much less likely so folks can create uh, personal view. So I can say Iron's personal view. And when I create that here at the top left, you'll notice that there's an automatically a my personal views section. Again, making it easier to recognize which views you've created and which are important to you and not necessarily accessible to the rest of the team. Now, one thing I do want to bring attention to, we got a lot of questions when we did this uh, note on personal views. I think it was Kuovon who asked this question. Uh, you can now reassign personal views. So either if because a collaborator has left the company or the workflow, you're able to reassign it to someone else, not having that uh, view just live there for a collaborator that's no longer in your workflow. Final attention or penultimate, before last thing I wanna bring your attention to, you can now favorite views even if they are collaborative. So here on the top, I have my personal views. I can add this to my favorites. And now I have a section right here at the top with my favorites. So if you have your favorites and then your personal views, it makes it much more streamlined to when you're working within the base. Last thing I wanna to talk to you about is uh, when you're configuring a view, you can now have if uh, and or type uh, condition groups. So before you had to select when you're creating multiple uh, conditions. So let's say where status is any of building or live. When you were adding a second condition, you would always have to pick between and or or. We heard the community say we'd like more granularity there and the option of mixing and or or conditions together. So we added condition groups. So here you can say it has to have this condition and we can move this one into the group. There we go. And here I can use an or. So it'll say where status is any of building or live. And, and in, within this condition, I can use or. So again, referencing that table talk on views to kind of understand how to use this uh, condition groups to truly create the views that you need for your workflow. Great, so Stephanie, we have a huge fan of the filter groups, huge fan as well. Definitely one of those small, maybe medium-sized improvements that we heard from the community that you needed to create, organize, and really truly create those views that you need instead of creating formula fields that you then filter on uh, to create this type of more complex filtering logic. Whew, okay, how am I doing on time here? Okay, I've got about eight minutes and we have a lot more. 
uh, to cover in this year in review. So I'm gonna speed up here a little bit. Boom. Okay, sync, another one of those elements that Andrew talked about. Uh, sync allows workflows across either different bases or different apps to be unified into one Airtable base such that work can happen in different places, but really create that data set, that piece of information that has that single source of truth in one place. And that first iteration last year was Airtable Sync. So here we have an Airtable Sync, which syncs from another base and gets all of the product launches from the product team updated into our content marketing. But what we heard from folks was saying, well, what if I have multiple sources? Can I sync two or three Airtable bases into one such that I'm able to have that aggregation layer so I can have all of those workflows come into my table? And this year we released multi-source sync. So you can always add records from another Airtable base but we didn't just stop there. We added multi-source from different sources. So you can sync from Salesforce, Jira, Google Calendar, Google Drive, Box, Outlook, GitHub, Zendesk, and many more to come. And these were selected based on what we heard from you as other apps that you use or connect to that you like to centralize in one place. So with that, I just wanna give my hats off to the sync team uh, for enabling all of these different integrations to truly create one single source of truth. So hats off to the Sync team. We added multi-source Sync this year, if I'm not mistaken, but also added many more sources that you can Sync from. Whew, okay, how much? I'm, oh, it's gonna be tough. Oh, interface designer and automations in five minutes. Let's see if I can do this. All right, there we go. Interface designer, exclamation part. We've talked so much about interface designer over the last couple of weeks, but interface designer speaks to that third part that Andrew was mentioning is how do you, on complex workflows, it can get challenging for a collaborator to know exactly what they should be doing in the workflow. And interface designer allows you to give access or give insights into the base, allow folks to get the information that they need out of it, update the information that they need, and enable them to work within a more limited range within the workflow, but also show it in a way that's more convenient to them. So just quickly gonna show an interface I built out here, which is an example of an approval workflow. So you can imagine that if I'm a reviewer, content reviewer, and I just need to make sure that the copy for the Facebook post is good, instead of going into the Airtable base, let me move myself out of the way here. There we go. Um, and now I can come in here and just simply approve the post. Instead of going into the underlying Airtable base, I can just do that. Boom, you'll see that it leaves my queue and I can continue approving pieces of content, really making my part in the workflow much easier. So there are some templates you can start from record review, you can do create a dashboard and many others. So I do recommend checking out the stream we did or the table talk we did around interface designer. And we did a second one with the team behind Interface Designer talking a little bit about best design practices and the thinking behind how we built Interface Designer. Whew, okay. How does that feel? Are we doing too quickly, too slowly? I do wanna make sure we have time for the swag uh, and that we go through some of the updates. This is actually not all of the updates that we did this year. All right. Okay, last update that I did want to talk to you about, but again, not exhaustive. So I think there was in the chat, airtable.com slash what's new for a more exhaustive list of the different features, small and big, that we launched this year. So did want to talk about some of the big, big, big uh, updates we did to Airtable automation, that logic layer that Andrew mentioned in terms of democratizing software. Let me go into the base here. And let's build one together and talk a little bit about the updates that we made this year. So I'm gonna go into automations. I'm gonna create a custom automation. The first thing, the you know, folks who remember this from last year, completely redesigned UI based on your feedback. Didn't want it to be limited to the view on the right. Full layout because this is a service area we're gonna invest in. So I'm gonna call this 
weekly email update and showcase some of the new uh, triggers and actions that we built. So the first one I wanna to talk to you about is at a scheduled time. So now you can run an automation every day, every week, every month, every year, whenever you want. So let's say we wanna run it every week, every one week on Monday, give yourself that 10 a.m. email, letting everyone know all the campaigns that are in, you know, building like that. So this is a new trigger that we built out this year. So second thing I wanna show you off. Great, so there's some, some, uh, some teaching going on in the chat, love to see that. So appreciate folks answering questions uh, in the chat. So here, the second thing I wanna bring your attention to is all the new integrations that we added. So folks said we wanted more notification options. So you'll see that there are many more. Wanted Outlook as a destination. We added that as well. Things like Jira and Salesforce and Hootsuite. Folks wanted more scheduling options. Uh, and so we integrated many more GitHub, Google Workspace. So not gonna name them all, but a lot of new actions that you can add. Well, here, I just wanna talk about one that I quite like, which is find records. And we're gonna find records in our campaign table. Another thing I wanna talk about here, from feedback from the community, you wanted to keep a way to have view base information and automation side by side. So that was a little UI update here. So let's say I want to only find records where, in campaign, where the status is building. So I wanna keep the condition where status is building. So if there are any folks from Airtable watching and I haven't mentioned what you worked on, I apologize. I'm really trying to get everything done in the next two minutes here. Uh, so let's run that test. There you go. So now we have those records. Let's bring this back. And the last thing I wanna bring your attention to is the send email action. Let's imagine I'm sending it to myself campaigns in building. And here, this is a new of this year, you can go ahead and go to step two, go to the records you found and add them as a list. Let's say I want the campaign name, I want the content, I want the product, insert that. You can now add records you found in a previous step as an HTML list. Final thing I wanna bring your attention to is you can have a preview email. So if you're drafting an email, you can see what that email looks like. You say, yep, that looks good. I'm excited about this. You can turn that automation on. So this is just one of those multiple actions. So the schedule, the find records, the preview email, all come together and enabling one of the crucial elements that folks from the community said they wanted to do on Airtable, which is this digest email use case, but also enabling others such as uh, you know, uh, social media and other integration. So huge updates coming from automations. Whew, that was a lot. Okay, am I good on time? Okay, we have a couple minutes to do the last confetti of the year, but we'll be back in 2022, no worries. Let's get excited, let's drop some confetti in the chat for the last one before we do the final swag draw of the year. So now's a good time, before I click on this, if you haven't yet, gone to the form to win swag, make sure to enter your name. I'm gonna go ahead and run it in a couple of minutes. So do make sure that you filled it out. I'm giving you some time here. So this is me giving you some time to go out and fill out the form uh, so you can be eligible to win, win the final swag pack of 2021. I feel like I've given you enough time. So let's mark this as checked. All right, okay. Whew, lots to cover. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so we have a minute here. So Jack, dedupe automation, uh, you can run a script. There's uh, learn Airtable scripting where we did that. Uh, so that's definitely possible today, but love the feedback. Confetti, amazing, love it. Coolbone, Penny. All right, I feel like I've left enough time for everyone to go ahead and let me go ahead and open up. Let me go here. I just need to do a little bit of configuration so I can do the final swag draw of the year. How are we feeling? Are we excited? Okay. 
Now, if this went well, and I have configured this correctly, let me move myself out of the way. Here we go. Three, two, one. HR Wright, congratulations. You are the final winner of our swag for Table Talk in 2021. Uh, appreciate uh, you coming and all of you coming for 12 Table Talks. It was super fun. It will continue to be super fun. This show would be nothing without all of you uh, joining and having fun with us. So really appreciate uh, each one of you for coming uh, to Table Talk and having some fun with us. And I really uh, do want to say this. I had so much fun coming on every uh, Thursday and um, answering your questions. And I'm so excited about what we have lined up in 2022. Wow. Um, and continuing this and taking out different iterations of it. What can we do more of? What can we do less of? How can I answer more of your Airtable questions? So I hope to have more colleagues come on, more of you come on to the show. If you have any ideas of what we should do, my email is aaron at airtable.com. That's A-R-O-N at airtable.com. I really want to hear your ideas, want to continue this show, want to continue having fun with you all um, in 2022. But as Chris says, let's relax until 2022. Give ourselves a break, relax. So wishing you the same thing. Happy holidays, happy new year, and hope to see you same place, same time next year. And truly it was a pleasure and will continue being a pleasure having you all on for Table Talk. So with that, thanks to Jan, Penny, Stephanie, Michael, uh, Coolvon, uh, Eric, and uh, so many of you who are watching after this goes live. Appreciate you joining. Thanks everything for this year, and I will see you back next year. Have a great holiday, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon.